and Integration, Lieutenant General Carson S. Heckel, we welcome you to today's building dedication ceremony for the General Robert B. Neller Center for Wargaming and Analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation by Captain Michael D. Brown, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, and remain standing for the March on the Colors, the playing of our national anthem, and honors to the 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Multiple war games, 
and multiple classifications, all separated by a wall. And it's going to be amazing. At FOC, we'll be able to run 22 more games simultaneously. But as you heard the voice mentioned, it's going to be all about getting the people in here. Um, the push this facility is going to increase your fighter effectiveness and we foul. We foul. And it will help us learn tough lessons, incorporate those into the campaign and learning, identify our blind spots, and we'll do it in training, not in combat. It also allows us to be more fiscally responsible. We can run more games in simulation before we can get any resources. Travel dollars, fuel, ammo, meals, etc. This won't re replace the central fuel training, certainly, but we'll make it more relevant and realistic. And if somehow I've come to learn this job that was not apparent to me before, our, our, our industry partners. Absolutely a crucial element in everything we do uh, to make us effective on the battlefield. And what this building is going to bring to them is you're going to get more refined input quicker and, and more detail. When this building reaches full uh, operational capability, the war games that will ensue will further accelerate our ability to outthink, outpace, and outmaneuver any adversary. And I look forward to that day. And now I'm going to turn over the podium without any further ado, so I don't need any, any, any uh, introduction. Our assistant commander of the Marine Corps, Drew Mahoney. Mahoney has been involved with this from the beginning, the campaign of bombs, because as you know, it ain't all about the money. It's all about the money, and Drew Mahoney has made this reality for us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a couple, uh, couple observations. One's our main beautiful weather. The second one is a derivative of an observation that's already been made that all the three stars, because of the beautiful weather, are out of the Pentagon. So we've done it. I think I might have even seen General Ellis smile a couple of times. But I'm not you. Uh, welcome to everybody, to all the distinguished guests, to all the other general officers, SESs, etc., uh, to pay tribute to the dedication of this great facility. First, we already talked about it, but to everybody that I've handed this, we've got a flavor for a lot of them this morning. Uh, your efforts are, are physically noticeable, but they're, they will be noticeable in the analytic efforts that we go through in the future. Service wouldn't have been possible without your leadership, without your direction, uh, and your vision. You had the wisdom and foresight to know that we, General Dell, we, the Marine Corps, had to modernize. And you catalyze, I guess catalyze is a, is a substance or a chemical that increases a reaction, makes it faster, makes the result come quicker. You catalyze greater investment in our ability to test, evaluate, and analyze the force for the future fight. Today we see your initiatives become a reality in the building behind you. The dedicating this building isn't just about the 37th time, that was a big part of it. It's about the Marine Corps' dedication to modernization, to analysis, into innovation. Now, just down the street on the other side of the Hall is Breckenridge Hall. That's where we do our war game for generations of Marines. That's where we war game our force design initiatives. Hand drawn unit plaques, laminated maps, cardboard cutoffs. Now, maybe that was a state of the art for this day, but that day has now come around. That, that alone, though, doesn't justify the facility. It's more than just going to analog to digital. The, the Nell Center will allow us to conduct modeling and simulation of friendly and enemy forces, their capabilities at scale, speeds, and classification levels. I can't stress that enough. Classification levels that were previously never achieved. Not unimaginable, because the 37th time I imagined it in that period. Will allow us to use machine generated synthetic forces that mimic the adversaries and truly test our knowledge and assumptions. But to me, here's what's more important about this building it buys us something that the security environment is denying us right now, which is uncertainty. From the Sahel to the Levant, from Donetsk over to Yongyang to the Sakhalins, the security environment is becoming increasingly uncertain. This building will buy us a higher level of uncertainty from the idea of the concept to the end of the bay. Buys us the chance to make mistakes, the chance for the cost where those mistakes are paid by a cost of released blood. It will buy us a body of evidence that is uh, backed by empirical data, backed by repetition, and a level of fidelity where we set the analytic pace. We say, not the Chinese. Not the Russians or anybody else. It will make us more ready. 
We don't know who will be the next Daniel Pratt Mannix, the next Pete Ellis, or the next Bob Nell, but I'll tell you that the ideas that they come up with and the test of those ideas will happen in this building. With that, it's my honor to introduce the 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Rob Nell. Officers, SCSers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends, a lot of people came a long way to be here, and I really appreciate it. You honor Darcy and our family. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind everybody that uh, as you get older when you're young, you go to weddings and baptisms, and when you get older, you go to other events. <laughs> There's others, but I think those two are. Because Vince was part of this discussion, mostly because when he was a DA, he had some money, and I was trying to take it. <laughs> uh, and when we, when we joined the Marine Corps, when Harvey Seegers and I came here in 1974, and Little Hall was the PX, and this was a ball field where Ron Coleman and the AWS football team would just, just crush everybody every week, myself included. You don't think they had a name of building that uh, When General Berger called me about, I don't know, nine months ago and told me about this, Darcy goes, Who is that? I go, It's time that they're going to name a building after me. The war game is that. She goes, well, Whose idea was that? <laughs> so, um, yes, it was mine. <laughs> so, Tom Gordon and I were on the side, we had a list of 250 things we were working on. Uh, but I never thought something like this would happen. The Marines, we learned war game from the very beginning, from the first time you're out in squad the attack, or Sulu 1 or 2, or a train model, or bucket guards, giant cats model, where people were walking around and got yelled at. Myself included, and I did the same thing. You know, it's working. You know, time on rehearsal is seldom wasted. Just like reconnaissance, right? Time on reconnaissance and rehearsal is seldom wasted. And we're all shaped by our experience. Uh, I was an IA after 9 11, and I went to UCOM to replace Rick's over, and he had to go do something. And I was stuck in the BOQ at Stuttgart, and then they were going, and I realized BBC live stream, I binged on Star Trek, Next Generation, and John Luke Picard. How did that? War of 1812. I'm like, this is, that's really cool. Maybe we'll do that one day. And then, uh, came to Lincoln University, and realized there was a war gaming center, and a group of people, and they did war games, and we used war games to facilitate the education of our officers. And then what really hit me on my opportunity to be on the joint staff of the J3, replaced J, and Marty Gibson was the chairman. And he goes, A3, uh, I want to do a war game for fourth generation for two major regional conferences at the same time. Go for that, I'll come back and tell me I'm going to do it. Yes, yes, chairman. And I realized there's no place to go. We had a place. There was nothing. And we came down here to Ellis Hall, just like Nimitz in the Pacific War Center, and we made a bunch of cardboard cutouts, and we put a big world map on the deck, and we pushed these things around for the chairman and the Joint Chiefs of Staff.
that's far enough away where they can't, you know, go home, but it's not so far that they can't get home when they're done. And so, I said, well, we got to do something. Well, then how do you get the money? What's going to happen? We're going to get support, and we're going to figure out how to put it in the farm, and what's the technology going to be, and on and on and on. And so, well, there's lots of good ideas. I thought, why don't you guys go make that happen? There it is. That was about the next time. Go make that happen, General Dana, and see if this whoever's got some money from the BIA. And so when, when General Berger called me up, I mean, I'm like, it's honor and humble. And when we tour the facility, and hopefully you will, all will one day, if you haven't already, you get to see capabilities in there. I mean, we're not to the holiday city. It's close. And you think about all the stuff that's happened with large language models and, and the training of AI and different things and all the stuff that we're going to be able to do. It's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. And it hopefully happen in the school. And the Marine Corps will, once again, have figured out a way to get ahead of the game. We gotta stay ahead of the game. Because there are people out there that don't wish us well. They will not be naive about it. If you know who they are, I'm not gonna say their name. But we gotta be ready. And that's what we have done for 246, 47 years, or whatever it is. I don't go to birthday balls <laughs> uh, We've been ready when the nation is loose. <laughs> This will help us stay there. And so it's a great honor. I'm humbled. Uh, this is the effort of hundreds, if not thousands, of other Marines who have had these ideas and made this happen. And uh, people that were in PNR with Mo and Jensen and all the people and uh, Walters and Everybody has a finger in this. And now we just need to take advantage of it. And we need to make sure that we let our joint partners know about this. And they can come out and use it. If they pay. And I made so much decisions, but you know, we're pretty generous with the use of our training facilities and our training areas. We all really are going to the world. Not everybody else is so nice. So I think we should take our learnings and different things like that and make them come down here and play in our building. And I think they will. And whether it be our past Secretary McDonough and Secretary Spencer passed the word to the generation, this place won't be open for another year or so. But this is a place, we have conferences here, this is a great place. Because it's got the geography far enough away from DC, but not too far where it's in. So, for General Mahoney, please pass on to General Smith, for General Heckle and the team, and Joe Scheffler, and all the people that are here, and all the other people that took the time to come down here uh, to be here for this. I really, really appreciate it. We've got a lot of old friends here. Hopefully, you can come to the reception afterwards and you can, you know, say hi and say hello. And uh, I miss you. I don't miss that place up the road, but I miss you a lot. And I would be remiss and fine full of anything my family. I know most of here is the RC anyway. And that's the true, truly definition of better half for pictures in the dictionary.
a consummate warfighter and leader. His vision and advocacy of wargaming, analysis, and innovation serve as the very foundation of this facility. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the General Robert B. Nellon Center for Wargaming and Analysis. Please rise for the flying of anchors away.